We'll start to illustrate the use of a sigma w coupled analysis by simulating a one-dimensional consolidation process. In file SIG11, we have a simple one-dimensional column. The column is one meter high. The original water pressure or water table, sorry, is at the surface of the column and we will apply a surface pressure of 100 kPa on the surface of the column to see the pore pressure response and then model the dissipation of the excess pore pressure. Going then to GeoStudio file SIG11 Under the GeoStudio desktop, you should see this information in this file. There is only one analysis, coupled load and dissipation type of an analysis. Now the material properties have been defined for you and the geometry has been defined for you. There are a few things that need to be highlighted, however. Number one is under key in analyses, we have now selected a coupled, a coupled stress pore water pressure type of analysis. That's the first thing. So it is a particular type of analysis from this analysis list. It is a the coupled stress slash pore water pressure analysis. The second thing, just like in a CPW transient analysis, we have to define the time stepping sequence, and the time stepping sequence is identical to what we did in CPW. The uh, properties here have not, are not all that realistic. They're here selected mostly for illustrative purposes. So, in order to dissipate the pore pressure in this particular one meter column, we have a duration of 3,500 seconds, 3,500 seconds, 20 time steps, increasing the time steps ex exponentially and making the first time step one second. One more thing under key in analysis notice that we are getting our initial pore water pressure conditions from the water table exactly like in a transient seep analysis. Inspecting the soil properties, draw materials. We only have one material, sorry, one material and the uh, second material here is not required for this analysis. Nonetheless, several things to notice here that the material category is now eff effective. The material category is effective parameters with pore pressure change. If you recall in session one, we talked about the categorization of soil parameters, total stress, effective drain. Now in a coupled analysis we need to be effective parameters with pore pressure change is the category. We have a Young's modulus that's constant using a linear elastic constitutive relationship. We are not going to use the self weight of the material in this particular case, but we will use a Poisson's ratio of a third, making K naught 0.5. And recall that with a Poisson's ratio of a third, our M sub V should be equal to 1 over E. M V 
is equal to 1 over E when Poisson's ratio is a third from just a few moments ago. So therefore, M sub V should be equal to 1 over 2,000 is equal to 1 E minus 5, 1 over KPA. I'll come back to this in a little bit. Now the first thing is that when we do now select effective parameters with pore pressure change, we need to define the hydraulic uh, properties. We need to define the volumetric water content function and we need to define the hydraulic conductivity function exactly the way we did in a transient seepage analysis. The volumetric water content function we are using here is this one illustrated here. Now it is of significance here that we will be at positive pore pressures at all times in this 1D consolidation simulation, but in spite of that we have formulated sigma in such a way that in a coupled analysis you must always define a volumetric water content function. Actually the pore pressure will, in, in this view, the pore pressures will always be positive, so this portion of the curve will not be used here, but to repeat, we nonetheless have formulated sigma in such a way that you must always have a volumetric water content function for a coupled analysis. However, what I want to draw your attention to here is that we have specified M sub V here as 1 over 2,000, which is 5 times 10 to the minus. That is 1 times 10 to the minus 5, or sorry, 5 times 10 to the minus 4 Kp, 1 over Kpa. So this value here is equal to 1 over 2,000 which is E. Now I noticed in the last couple of slides in the fundamental section that the volumetric water content function should have a smooth and continuous curve on the negative and positive side. It is difficult to see it in this view and so we need to look at a different range of x to y. So if we look from minus 10 up to say 50, we can now see that indeed here is the slope. The slope of this curve here is m sub v and the slope is nice and continuous with the volumetric water content function. When you specify M sub V, it's always useful to take a look at this to make sure that the slope is somewhat consistent with the volumetric water content that has been defined. The most important thing is that the slope be continuous and smooth where we go from negative pore water pressure to positive pore pressure. So that is the volumetric water content function to repeat. We actually don't use the negative pore water pressure portion of the function in this particular example, but nonetheless it is required in a sigma w coupled analysis. The second parameter is the hydraulic conductivity function and once again in this particular case and in actual fact we will only be using the saturated hydraulic conductivity which is 1 
times 10 to the minus 6 meters per second. So those are the material properties required for a coupled analysis in this particular case. Now, as I noted in the introduction and on fundamentals, that we now need to define both sigma type boundary conditions and seep type boundary conditions. So to simulate the application of the load, recall from our session one on sigma w that sigma w has an incremental formulation. So we want to apply the 100 kPa for the first increment, but then not apply it in all the other increments. Otherwise, we would be applying 100 kPa each time step, which is not what we want to do. We can do this through a boundary function, say draw boundary conditions, clicking on key in, we have here a boundary type that has been created that is called applied pressure. We have selected normal tan type uh, category, and we are going to apply the pressure as a loading function. Going to the function then, this is the function, and it is a simple step function. And so our first time step, recall, was one second. Therefore, sigma w needs a delta stress as a boundary condition. So therefore, the delta stress is time one minus time zero is 100 minus zero is equal to 100 kPa. So for the first time step, which is one second, we are going to get an incremental load of 100 kPa. But look at all other time steps from 1 to, say, 3. Now it is 100 minus 100, and so forth. At any, say, 6 minus 3 is 100 minus 100. So we are applying no further load. We are applying no further load after the first time step during which we are applying a surface pressure, a normal pressure, of 100 kPa. It is also the first time that we have taught in our worships, uh, in our, sorry, in our workshop, talked about a step data point function. It is not a spline data point function, but a step data point function. A step data point function. And we simply have typed in the values here for this step function. So we are controlling the application of the surface load through a boundary function. We will apply the boundary function on the surface. And since we are only one element wide, we only get one arrow. Now we must also apply our hydraulic boundary condition. And we know that the water table is at the surface, uh, meaning that the pore pressure is zero at the surface. So we have a pressure head of zero at the surface of the column. So we also have to apply on the line, the zero pressure hydraulic boundary condition. Two types of boundary conditions, sigma type and seep type boundary conditions. I believe we have uh, completed the definition. Clicking on verify would suggest that that is true. We can now click on solve and solve this problem.
going to the results view, we can look at the results in various ways, probably most effectively through draw graph, and we can plot the pore water pressure dissipation. Let us start with the initial condition. In this particular example, I had set the unit weight of water to 10 kilonewtons per meter cubed, purely for illustrative purposes and easy hand calculation, spot checking hand calculations. And so it is zero pressure at the top, 10 kPa at the base of the column. Holding down the control key and looking at the pore pressure immediately after the surface load has applied, it is obvious that we have a 100% pore pressure response over most of the column. This is 110, and so we have a delta of 100 plus the initial 10 gives us 110, and so we have 100% pore pressure response with a little bit of consolidation near the surface of the column during the first delta T, which is one second. We can now, sorry, draw graph. We can hold down the control key and look at other times, looking at the dissipation with time. And so we're now we see that, of course, as time goes along, that the excess pore water pressure is being dissipated. And at 3,500 seconds, it almost all of the excess pore water pressure has dissipated. You can look at things like pore water pressure at the base of the column sets uh, the location. Right now we're taking a look right at the base of the column and we see that we got 110 kPa pore pressure at the start, 100% response to the load and then dissipation with time. Another instructive graph is to look at the surface settlement with time naming the graph surface settlement. We're plotting displacement. We want to plot the y displacement versus time for all time. And set location. We will select a geometry item rather a custom location and look at just one node on the surface and show the graph and here is the settlement with time of the column. So there's a brief introduction to a coupled analysis emphasizing the fact that we need to define both sigma and seep-like properties and boundary conditions, and then we can look at the applied load and how the pore pressure dissipates with time and how the soil consolidates as the pore water pressure dissipates.